Well, hi there and welcome. My name is DJ Mark Power, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the tweeter, the high frequency driver, looks like this, on the Alto TS215. Now, apparently, the TS212 and the TS210 use the same driver. I'm going to give you a close up. I've got another camera here. This is what the driver looks like. As you can see, it's not particularly large. The reason I'm doing this video is I could not find another video on YouTube to how to do this and as a DJ I've had to learn how to repair my own equipment for many years and so I have already changed one of these. I blew two of them out at a junior high school dance I did recently and so I've in my studies on the web I learned that uh, that's a pretty common thing to blow the tweeter on these. Some people tell me that if I don't turn the gain up past 12 o'clock, I'll give you a close-up of this. If you don't turn the gain up past 12 o'clock, then supposedly that will help. But uh, I, it doesn't make sense to me because whether you're turning it up at one end or turning it up at the other end, as long as it's not distorting, this has got a, a protection circuit on it with a little light that goes on when the protection is coming on. It shouldn't be blowing tweeters, but apparently they are and I've heard of several of the people who've blown them. I blew two like I said just last weekend. I ordered these on from Full Compass online. Uh, they had the best price on them. They were like $28 and some change per tweeter. I bought three of them since I blew two. I figured I'm going to blow a third one one of these days down the road. I might as well stock up so I don't have to wait a week to get them. Uh, I bought two or three because the shipping was only $8 for the shipping for three whereas the shipping for one would have been like $6. So I got it figured I might as well put the shipping across three of them, save myself money down the long run. So today we're going to learn how to change the tweeter. I've already done one of these so I know how it goes. And um, so let's begin, shall we? Now this tweeter is accessed from the back panel. You've got to take these screws off here. Very important, you've got to have an electric screwdriver. If you're going to be doing any kind of speaker repair, there's a lot of screws that need to be taken off. Now I will speed this process up for you, the viewers. And I am going to take off. Let's see how many speakers we have here total. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 screws. Hold this back plate on. So without uh, without an electric screwdriver, this is good. This is a early arthritis of the wrist ready to happen. Now I've also noticed that on some of these speakers that there's a little vibration going on. I put a piece of tape right here, but if, if you've got a vibration going on in your cabinet, try tightening up these screws. When you do the tightening, you sure to use a manual screwdriver because it's pretty easy to over tighten a screw and strip the internal threads. And you don't want to do that because then the screws won't stay tight ever again. But for taking the screws off, electric screwdriver is definitely the way to go. I'm shooting this with a Samsung V20 in a selfie mode right now. That's what you're seeing right now. I'm going to set these screws aside. I always find a little dish or a bowl is a good thing to put your screws in so that they don't... Uh... So I've got a, a Samsung LG. Which we'll give you some close-up shots there. So you can see now I've removed, I've loosened all the screws so just grabbing one of the knobs carefully and let's look inside right, shall we? we so we've pulled this off and we look inside and there is our tweeter there and there is a heat sink on the back of it that you won't find on the uh, you don't see otherwise now I'm going to lay this speaker down I'm going to lay it down on its front on its back or on its front first I'll just set it down on the floor Got some cloth here so that I can lay the speaker on its front and I won't scratch anything up while doing this. So we'll put it this way. Much easier to work on it now that the screws are out. And let's take a look back down inside. There you are, there is our tweeter, and there's the heat sink, and there's some cushioning stuff in here. And this hooks up to this digital amplifier, which is part of the reason this case is so light, is because it doesn't have giant magnets. Uh, there's a pretty good sized magnet. Uh, it's not that big of a magnet on the woofer. 
there's almost no magnet at all on the tweeter, but they put a heat sink on there because obviously these tweeters get hot. And when they get hot, they burn out. And we end up changing them. So we've got to unscrew this screw here from the heat sink. Now, the last time I did this, I was able to just untwist it. Yeah, so I'm going to reach down in here and I'm just going to twist the heat sink in a counterclockwise manner. I'm just twisting it. So I just unscrewed it right off the back of the tweeter. So now this thing, just give it a pretty hard twist. And you can see this, the way this is designed, these terminals here, they hit the top casing. So you have to, un you have to unattach the wires to it so that you can unscrew this thing. And um, I noticed that these were terminals were bent down on the on the last one I did. They're not bent down on this one. I'm going to bend them down so that it'll clear when I pull it out. So I'll just show you what's going on down there. So I'm unscrewing this. Just unscrewing it out. It has threads on it. And we dropped it down in there, so let's find out where it went. Okay. So here it is. Here's the one, here's the heat sink compound. It's this white creamy stuff that's on there where the heat sink screwed on. And those are the threads where it screws onto uh, the base. Now this one says it's part HG00553, but when I went on the internet, the replacement part is a different number than that. I don't know if it's an upgrade or they've just changed their part number. The new part number is HH. 00602. That's the part that Full Compass sent me, and I have confirmed that these parts do fit, and they are almost identical to the originals. I'm going to bend these tongs down so it'll be easier to screw the thing back into the case. So I have got a pair of pliers here, regular old pliers, which I will use to bend these terminals, bend them down towards the and it makes it easier because this hits inside the top where the handle comes down. The handle comes in here, gets in the way. So I'm going to reach down in here. This is this part of the trickier part of the thing is getting it lined up so that the threads don't strip so that you can screw this back down on here. I believe we're screwing down. It looks like it's working. So now we're screwing in and of course clockwise. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. That's always a really good trick to remember. To the right, to tight, left to the loose. To loosen it up. So I'm screwing that the new tweeter right back down into the into the horn handle. And keep going, keep going, keep going. Almost there. Until it's nice and firm. Nice and firmly seated. No, nope, it's gonna go a little bit more. Okay, that's as far as it's gonna go. And now, now I'll show it to you again. I'll show you inside. There it is. And we need to hook the wires back up to it. So there's one that's a, this one that's a wide one. The wide one goes on the red. And of course the narrow one goes on the narrow. And now we've got to put the heat sink back on this one. So let's get this heat sink out. And I place the heat sink right right there and I'm gonna get a screwdriver out and screw that down. Now I'm lucky I can kind of manually screw this thing down. This sh the screw is really short. I do not know why the screw seems so darn short. Okay what I decided to do because my screwdriver was too t too long to reach down in here and it was hitting the top of the cabinet I took the bit out of my Black & Decker electric screwdriver. Now I love this particular Black & Decker screwdriver because it uses standard AA batteries. And that means when the batteries run down you can just slap some new ones in or slap some new rechargeables in whereas if you have the ones that have the lithium ion packs and your battery dies then you gotta go and plug your battery into the charger unless you've got an extra battery. And um, so I just took the bit out so that I could reach in here so I have enough room I will show you with the close-up here so that I could reach in here and just manually screw that screw in 
to the back of the cabinet. And once I did, then I was able, I can manually tighten it just by turning it, rotating it, so that it makes it nice and tight. So now we've got our heat sink screwed on nice and tight. And our tweeter has been reinstalled. And now we're ready for the reassembly. So we just put the top of the thing back on, put our 12 screws back in, and this speaker is ready to, ready to test and make sure that it's working. Now the way you know that the tweeter went out is suddenly there's no more there's no more highs. Your speakers sound muffled, they sound just don't sound as good because these speakers have a gorgeous sound. That was the reason I bought them, is they just have a beautiful sound when they're working. But suddenly, you got to use it, and in the middle of a dance, sounds like they're singing into a wash rag. All the bass is there, but none of the none of the high end, none of the cymbals are all suddenly missing. All the all the high end quality audio is suddenly missing, and you know you've blown your high frequency driver, aka the tweeter horn driver. So we are almost done here on showing you how to do this. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial on fixing the Alto TS215 tweeter high frequency driver today. Again, my name is DJ Mark Power. My company is Good Time DJs. I'm wearing the blue collar today because I'm doing some blue collar work when I go out to do weddings and parties. I usually wear a tuxedo and a vest and a bow tie, but no point in when you're getting your hands dirty, you can't be wearing your nice clothes. You gotta put on the on the workman clothes. So your jeans and the blue collar shirt. Again, electric screwdriver, absolutely necessary if you're gonna do this more than once. I've learned how to replace the tweeters and the woofers in most of the different speakers that I've owned over the years. I've always blown a few. This is the first time I've blown a tweeter on a speaker after only owning it for four months. I bought five of these back in uh, February. I have called Alto to talk to them about uh, a warranty because they have a supposedly a one-year workmanship warranty. Uh, they have not gotten back to me, but hopefully they will and they'll reimburse me for the price of the tweeters that I bought. Uh, you can also buy them on eBay, I've noticed, and Amazon also sells the tweeter. Um, so now that I've basically screwed all the screws in with the electric screwdriver until they're relatively tight, I do the, the, the manual final tightening with a manual screwdriver. Just make them nice and snug, but not stripping them. I don't want to strip the holes because that would not be good. So, this baby looks to be like all the screws are nice and tight. And we strip the holes. Now one other deal with these speakers is they tend to get a little scuffed up, they get a little messy. I found a little bit of uh, 409 with a soft cloth, not a paper towel, because this is kind of a semi-porous material. If you try to wash them off with a, with a paper towel, paper towel just breaks up and fills the holes and you end up with little bits of paper towel on here. So some 409 cleaner will clean this up, or I have this stuff. So there's your 409 cleaner, that'll work just fine, or Armor All Extreme Tire Shine, or something to clean plastic parts in a car will clean this up really well as well and leave it a little more shiny, a little bit cleaner. And uh, shall we test it? Make sure it works? Let's do that. Alrighty. So I'll give you a close up of what I'm doing here. I have... So the, the, the input is one of these combination quarter inch XLR inputs. And so I've got a quarter inch here hooked up to an adapter. This is a stereo stereo quarter inch to RCA, but this is really a mono input. So I've only needed to use one side of this cable. And this is your standard aux connection hooked up to an iPhone. So I've got this iPhone on the other end. It's a, a quarter, they call it a mini jack. It's a 1 8 inch mini jack. Plug it into the back of my iPhone. And Ah, we got highs once again. I wish I'd shown you in the beginning because this, you didn't hear any of that. You can hear all that now. Sounding beautiful. 
Thanks for watching today. See you next time. I'm back. Hey, I did one more thing. I was saying that uh, they do get scuffed up and they do get dirty pretty easily. So if you're going to buy a pair of these or if you've already got some, I really suggest the, carry, the uh, slip on covers for this speaker. Slip on covers is a, definitely a good investment. You want to take good care and keep your speakers looking nice because if you're a professional and you're going out there doing weddings and parties, you want your equipment to look nice and clean at the job. So this is what the slip on covers look like. They're custom made for the speaker, the Alto Professional covers. They're a little tricky to get on, especially when they're brand new. So you gotta put the cover, you gotta line up the, the front with the front, and then there's these two lines right here which you need to line up with either side of the, uh, the speaker. I find it's easier to do on the ground usually. So let's move this little table out of the way and put them on the ground. And we'll do it. Put one on for you. I just just wiping up this side, and this Armor All Tire Shine does a nice job of cleaning them up. I had put a little piece of duct tape, black tape, right there on the top of the speaker to let me know that this was the one that had some problems, uh, which I just took off. But if the tape that you use leaves a little residue, there's a pro product called Goof Off that you can buy. And with Goof Off, it takes off all the extra gook, gooky gook. So once again, you got to line up the two lines on the back. And start pulling it down a little bit. Then you got to pull the whole case, the whole cover all the way around the front. You got to get everything lined up. You got everything coming down at once. And then you just kind of goose it around a little bit at a time. And you got to be careful where the knobs are, the volume knobs. Pull it down, and it catches on this bottom edge here. And, almost there, folks. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Once you've got it down almost all the way, I turn them upside down, and I grab this strap, and I grab the bottom, I kind of lift it into itself. So it's hooking, it's catching right here. And so we gotta get it back over that final lip. Once you're over the final lip, you can grab that end, that end, and this little strap comes around. One of the, another nice thing about the Alto, they're lightweight to carry around for loading. They're, they're back savers. And there's handles on the top, the bottom, and both sides. So you can Pick the speaker up from just about any angle. So once again, thank you for watching. DJ Mark Power, good night.